come in. If you not have a seat, come to the front. I'm not biting, at least not yet. I think we're all full after lunch. Um, so as I said, I think this will be a little bit challenging after the lunch break, but I hope I can keep you awake. Uh, please feel free to ask questions even during the talk. That's fine. Um, I may defer you to later, or uh, we can have that conversation at the end. It's up to you. But I love questions, so that's totally fine for me. So first, one short disclaimer. All the opinions here are my personal opinions, or let's say of the people who worked on that CISO survey. They do not reflect an organization. And um, everything I say is my own personal opinion, especially the wrong ones. So yeah, don't blame employers or others for the stupid things I say. Uh, just a quick background about who I am. Uh, so I, I've been with OWASP for a long time, I would say. Um, I've, I have a developer background. So I come from there originally. Um, I've been, I'm the project leader for, OWASP, for the OWASP CISO survey. I'm on the board of OWASP. So also if you have something to say about OWASP, you can catch me later. Um, I'm also the CTO for security for Huawei. Good. Yeah. And if you ever kind of think about changing career, come to me. Uh, we might have some questions, uh, some things to discuss. OK, enough about me. So the, uh, my presentation today is about the OWASP CISO survey 2015 results, which will be released in 2016, um, actually hopefully next month. Uh, we had one OWASP CISO survey in 2013 before. Um, there's also a second, like, sister project, which is the Application Security Guide for CISOs, uh, which has been uh, the project leader for that is Marco Morana. OK. Both of them can be bought, but actually, at this point, I don't recommend you to buy the 2013 booklet, because if you wait another few weeks, then you can get the 2015 booklet. Um, at first, a little bit about the methodology. So how ha did we collect the data? So we did send a service out to literally thousands of CISOs and security managers. And we received answers back from about 500 around the world. Uh, for the first version in 2013, it was about 200. So we had uh, a significant uptick. What might also be interesting to understand is um, this survey is not like a five-question survey. Okay? It's not like, oh, yes, no, you will see that in a, in a minute. So to take that survey takes actually about 25 to 30 minutes. So times 500, just for kind of collecting that data, you can see how much um, time and effort is invested in that survey, how much, how much um, value is in that service itself. Yeah, let's, let's peek a little bit into uh, the latest news. Cyber attacks ahead, I think that's not a new thing. Uh, one of the questions we were asking is like, where are your threats actually coming from? So I, I believe like a couple of years back, you would hear, oh, there's this insider threat kind of discussion. It was very high on the popularity uh, scale. Uh, when we were asking the CISOs, so where, are, where do you see most of the uh, threats coming from? Actually, many of them see an increase in the external threats, while the internal side is pretty much stable or the same. So if you are thinking about where you invest or where you plan, this might be an interesting... Now let's see whether I can get this. Yeah. So this might be an interesting data point for you to think, OK, maybe, maybe the internal side is kind of stable. Maybe you should now uh, look towards outwards and the, the thefts you get from the outside. Another one is also to think about what are the main areas. So I mean, like 10 years ago, like everybody would buy a firewall, you would buy an antivirus, endpoint security stuff, infrastructure-oriented security technologies. So we kind of asked, OK, so where, where do you see the main risks, like application, infrastructure, or something else? And pretty much more than half would say, or half would say it's application and about one third would say it's infrastructure. And this is quite consistent with what we had in 2013. So 
Um, the main threats are people, security managers clearly recognize that application security is the new area of risk that they need to address. Um, so one thing is where you are. Another question is where are you going? So what's the trend? Which way, are you, which way do you see things developing? So we were asking like, do you see things increase, be the same or decrease? And if you look at, let's click one more. So here, if you look at, um, this is, yeah. So this is infrastructure, this is application security. So application security, not only is it 50% is, is a main risk, no. 70% say this is even increasing more going forward. While for the infrastructure side, about 50% say, oh, well, this is also going to be stable. So it's, it's not so much the main risk anymore, and it's also going to be stable going forward. Um, and do you see new threats to web application security actually negatively impact your business? I mean, something is you have security vulnerabilities. The other thing is, how does this impact you? And yes, nowadays, fortunately, people actually recognize this is a concrete risk and this has an impact to your business. So this was a little bit looking at the threats. And now uh, moving a little bit further towards what do you see as the sources of the risk? So where, where does this come from? Like what, what are the main problems? And in the next page also, who are your key uh, threat agents that you have to address? So what's the kind of problems that you have? Like lack of awareness of application security was like the number one thing in your teams. Insecure source code development, staffing, which inherently means uh, the people you have may not have the right skill set or you have trouble finding the people with the right skill set. Uh, third party suppliers and inadequate testing. Um, I think for us as an organization, I mean, for, for us as security practitioners, of course, it's good that people recognize, hey, we need, we need staffing people. We, we need people with good security skills. I think for us as OWASP, it's also very interesting to understand that lack of application security awareness is actually a major, the major problem. Uh, and this is something where we all can work together to improve this. Um, so as I mentioned before, another question is like, who are the threat actors you're actually worried about? And when you open the newspaper, you read these articles about, oh, these nation, nation states kind of attacking companies and so on. So this makes quite frequently headlines. But when you actually ask the security managers, like, what are you worried about? They are worried about the criminals. They are a little bit worried about the, uh, somewhat worried about insiders, hobbyist hackers, but if you look like state-sponsored spies, it's quite far down the line. Uh, I mean, it's still on their radar, it's still on the agenda, but it's not the main source of their worries. The main source of their worries is criminals. Very straightforward. People who are in there to get money out of you. <laughs> um, so learning from, so this is actually more my personal experience slide, but I kind of wanted to put it in uh, because I also see a number of uh, incidents and threats and because we started with that topic. Learning from application security incidents, one thing I found is actually things are usually easier than you think. Uh, it, like, it sounds like there's a nation state coming, but uh, in some ways I felt like, oh, this is actually a simple security problem and we were just stupid or the company was just stupid enough not to fix it. But there was no high sophisticated attacker really behind it. Or let's, see, let's say it this way, it didn't require a very high sophisticated attacker to find this. Uh, often it was down to lack of awareness. It did not require a very high level of skill at that point. So with very basic functions, actually, uh, that was my personal perception over the last few years, you could actually have avoided this, but, well, you didn't. Um, another question that if you are running a security function is how much money, so where do you put your money? So first we kind of talked, what are the risks that you see? Now we have to think about where do you put your money to counter that? Um, this is one of the questions that we also ask um, how much budget do you allocate to IT secure, uh, to uh, application security, information security? 
Um, this is actually a very difficult question because uh, sometimes people may classify like a VPN as a part of a security investment, some may not. So some may say it's only staff, some may buy boxes. So, so this is a very diverse answer. However, I think if you average out over a large set of companies as we had here with over 500 responses, I think you get some trend that can be useful indication. And what I would say is like uh, a very large, more than 80% have 1% of or more of their IT budget allocated for cybersecurity. And more than 50%, 50%, half have 5% or more of their IT budget allocated to cybersecurity. If you have less, you might want to consider why you are so much better and don't need to invest as much money as your competitors. Or maybe you might be more at risk than you think. So I found this quite uh, an interesting perspective. Another thing is, of course, so how much do you sp did you spend? How much do you allocate now? The other thing is, going forward, what is the trend of your, of your investment? So will you increase this? Will this be the same? Over the next 12 months, um, so quite uh, about one-fourth would say, well, we stay roughly the same. Uh, about another fifth would say we increase up to 10%, and another fifth would say up to 50% we would increase this cybersecurity budget going forward. Very few people would stay with what they uh, would decrease it, only very few. And I guess some of these companies may have some financial troubles anyway. Good. Um, so this is a little bit of funny graph with too many colors. Um, in the previous survey, we, we only asked, did you have one incident or more in the last year? We didn't ask for how many. And that kind of gave us not good information about how many how often you are hit. So this time we actually asked for numbers. Like we asked like, uh, here you see like one, two, three, up to more than 100, which would be here this far end. If you have very large organizations, like global banks or so, they may be hit by more than 100 incidents per year, easily. And they may actually be quite sophisticated in managing every single one of them, because they have a lot of practice. <laughs> um, the interesting part that I would say is you had, so this is actually cybersecurity and this is application security. So for cybersecurity, about two thirds had one or more incidents in the past year. For application security, about half had one or more. So again, you can see application security is a significant part of the cybersecurity incidents that have happened. Um, yeah, but you can see here higher numbers do quite frequently occur. So what are the main damages if such incidents occur? So what's, what's kind of happening to you? What, what is the consequence? And the main uh, damage that they, um, that they perceive was interruption of service in the very first instance. That's kind of the first thing that they perceive is, is, is the main damage. Then, of course, you have reputational damage as number two. By the way, blue is like, uh, we, we gave them uh, an option to rank this, like what is your first main damage, second, third. And like this is the compound, and here blue is number one, number two, number three. So you could say interruption of service and reputational damage are the two leading um, main damages out of security incidents for your organization. Then loss of customer data, of course, that's quite a painful thing and you read about compromised direct financial loss actually is uh, significantly less compared to that. And theft of intellectual property, I believe like 10 years ago we were very worried about, oh God, they're going to steal our source code, yada, 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 or they're going to steal some secret recipes for how we do business. If you look at this, it's still a concern, but it doesn't go you, give you crazy nights. What gives you crazy nights is that your company is going to be in the headline and your CEO is going to fire you the next day. Okay. Um, so this is like, what are the damages? And now the kind of turning around, how, where will you invest specifically? So like we identified application security as a topic. So wh what will you do to counter that? 
where will you put your money specifically to go forward? And so this was like, for the coming 12 months, where will you make these investments? Where will you spend your money? Cyber risk management, info, information security management, quite a number of them did this. Data leakage, so, so you see this is a huge list, including some penetration testing, so, so there's a, a long list of stuff. Um, what I found interesting is that like SDLC seems not to be so high on this. And I mean, like if you build software, it's kind of a thing that you care about. Um, I found this table quite useful. So if you talk with your board or your other IT managers, um, this is a good source of you can look at it and you can think, okay, are we doing this? How are we comparing to others in the market? Are, are we following or um, maybe we forget something? Um, another thing is what do you see as the biggest challenges to your deliverer? To, to your delivery. So you have your money, you have your budget, you have your people, um, you have your priorities, so what's the biggest problems? And again, like what we saw at the beginning, like what's the key risks? Um, awareness and availability of skilled resources is the number one issue. Adequate budget is number two. I think five years ago, adequate budget was number one, probably. At least that's how I felt. It's like, oh, yeah, we don't have the money. Now, actually, we do have the money, but we don't have the people to execute on it. <laughs> um, it's still an issue, so it's still number two, but at least it's, uh, it's not your, your first problem. <laughs> Uh, management awareness, of course, still is a problem. So they do read the Financial Times where they write about cybersecurity, but maybe it's still they don't fully comprehend what that means for them. Uh, level of security awareness, organizational change. These are all challenges for your, deliver for your delivery. Fortunately, there is stuff like uh, emerging technologies is a little bit less, uh, regulatory change, uncertainty is also not so high, but still of a concern. So this is like your challenges. Of course, as we are OWASP, we were also curious, where do you see OWASP could help you? Like where is, um, I mean, this is like a little bit, not only security, but like from an OWASP perspective, we wanted to know what can we do for you? What is useful for you? And equally, maybe also good for you to know what other managers found useful within OWASP. So for what, for what problems is OWASP significant for you? Uh, awareness is clearly number one, it's very clear. Code development guidelines, application development policies, like coding policies, for example, testing, reference to leading practices. So actually, a little bit sad, I mean, it's good that you are all here. Um, a little bit sad for me was like staff attending or upset conferences seemed not to be so high on the, on the ranking, yeah? Um, I mean, I truly value that you're here. And I think your boss should so too. Um, yeah, I don't really know why this is so low, but I, because I believe this conference is just awesome. I mean, you have all these great talks, so yeah. But you see, I just reflect the data back and um, tell you what we get. Um, another question was like, what sh which projects? I mean, you know we have like 140 projects and it's basically impossible to weed through all of them. So kind of what works from an, so th be careful, this question was asked from an information security manager perspective, not from a developer perspective. So what did a manager find useful for their organization? And like you see the typical, I mean, always top 10 is kind of a given, yeah? I mean, it's widely referenced and everybody knows it, so there's a certain, that's, that's an easy bit. But like application security FAQ, cheat sheet, CISO guide, testing guide, ZAP, um, code review guide, ASVS, as you know, there's like talks here about ASVS, there was even a training about ASVS 3.0. So these are things that other companies found very useful. If you don't know them yet, this might be maybe a tip to take a look at some of them because others found it useful. Um, yeah, this was something this, some, this was something that was, I was actually curious about because like in the past, I was actually consulting a lot of companies uh, on CISO level, like what are you doing, what should be strategy? 
And I, was, I found that different companies have very different activities for their cybersecurity office. So I was curious, like, what are you actually doing? What is kind of in your responsibility as a cybersecurity or information security leader? I mean, the obvious things is like uh, some, some training you want to do as part of your program, requirements, risk management, this makes all sense. This is all okay. What kind of got me really scared is like using an SDLC is not part of your program? Are you sure? I mean, how, how do you control that the software that you buy, integrate, or build is secure if you don't care about the process you build it? Um, so I was very surprised that this was fairly low. So currently in, in use was below 50%. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the, the question was, um, as many of the activities on the top are actually part of an SDLC, why did we ask specifically for the overall process? Um, the thing is, if you are a manager, maybe you do individual activities, but what you want is also someone who looks at the end-to-end -end process and take responsibility for it. And it seems that's not so much the case, at least uh, for the people we asked. So it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah? So it seems like you do punctual solutions, but you, you didn't fully take responsibility for the whole thing. So th this was kind of odd to me. Uh, what's maybe also interesting is like that some of these steps are actually less common than you may think. Um, of course, we also were interested in tools. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this, but it was an interesting data point like to see what tools are you actually using or planning to use. This is often helpful if you need to make an investment. And I mean, these tools these days are actually becoming quite expensive, at least quite uh, a few of them. Um, so to understand like where you are compared with your peers, your benchmark. So like application vulnerability scanners is, is quite common and a number of them are also planning to use them. WAFs are quite common. Well, I'm not gonna read this all out. Runtime analyzers are still not so common. Good, so this was like uh, threats and where you put your money. And a few other questions that maybe managers want to think about is like your strategy or how you communicate these things inside your organization. Um, whether you build security into your process or whether you let everybody just go around it. Um, yeah, actually good news. Most boards these days have cybersecurity briefings. I mean, I'm still not sure how much they bring, how much effect that has, but like five years ago, I think very few boards would hear the term cybersecurity. It's like, hmm, yeah, this is something the IT guys do down there, you know what? Yeah, it's just, uh, now it's like, it seems everybody's kind of reading up, wising up, so, um, more than two thirds have cybersecurity briefings for on board level, which of course brings also new challenges like, for example, how do you explain cybersecurity to people who are illiterate to some degree in IT? Which may be things that you will have to address. Um, but you get better, much better board awareness, which is a good thing, which makes uh, at least the investment decisions more interesting. Um, another thing is how confident are you actually that your organization is protected? So we asked these 500 managers, how confident are you? What do you think? And um, quite a number of them, well, some of them said, yeah, okay, we're good, we're okay. So that's about half. About one third do recognize we do have problems. It's always good if you recognize you have problems because then at least you know you want to improve something. Um, and this, so this is like what, how they felt. And this, this, on the right side, you see, we also ask them, how often do you actually assess your own strategy? Whether it still fits your needs, whether it still fits your IT strategy, your business strategy. About half do it once per month or between once per month and once per year. So this is a reasonably good space. 
This is about once per year and some people do it quite rarely or basically don't reassess, which means they actually probably have no idea where they are. <laughs> um, so this is kind of, if you keep this in mind, then you have your briefings, you, you think about are you protected or not. So do you actually have a security strategy? Uh, quite a number of them do have, about two-thirds, but one-third doesn't. So I'm kind of wondering, uh, okay, so you don't have a strategy, you don't know where you're going, you don't know whether you're secure. Yes? So the security strategy was from the information security orchestra. Sorry. The source of the information was from the uh, commercial security orchestra. Yes. Like, if they don't have any strategy at all, they don't have assessment, what are they doing? Yeah. The, so, so the question of the gentleman was, so this information came from CISOs, so if they don't have a strategy, they don't do assessment, what are they actually doing? Honestly, I cannot answer that question. Maybe they are doing code review. <laughs> or maybe not. Or they just take the risk, is the answer from the back. Yeah, so, I mean, the other thing is, maybe they are still learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could also say maybe at least two-thirds of them seem to know a little bit what they're doing. <laughs> Let's be optimistic. Let's see. Let's climb back. Yeah, but the, the question is fair. So I'm, I, I don't have a good answer to this. Um, it, it could be that a number of managers are still quite operational. If you are operational means you are reactive, you do like what you did last year, just more, you may not have a full-fledged strategy. Um, the other question is, your application security strategy, has this been reviewed? I mean, it's, it's kind of anybody looking at this. Yeah? And uh, a couple of them, like one third, it's reviewed within the past 12 months, which means equally two third has not been reviewed within the last year. Is aligned with business. So there's a number of questions that I felt would be interesting, and I was a little bit surprised how low some of these ratings were. Uh, one good thing is, so there is a correlation between board briefings and whether you have a security strategy. So it seems if, if you brief your board, the board kind of seems to require that you have a strategy. Though the correlation is only 0.4, it's not one. One would be perfect correlation. Um, strategy and planning. If you write a strategy, so maybe some of you in the room will have to write a security strategy for your organization. The question is like, how many months in advance are you planning? So we were asked like, what's the time horizon for your strategy? What we found is um, we have short times, which I'm kind of a little bit skeptical. How can you make a strategy for three months time? That's very short. You know, any investment plan I make is normally longer. Um, you have one year. And then you actually have two years, three years, and more. So nearly half of the people had two years or more time horizons. If you compare this between 2013 and 2015, you see we have quite a move from like one or two year to a more a three year time horizon. One note um, that we made, that we found at 2013, was actually there is a correlation. So we were looking at what helps you increase investment in cybersecurity. And we tried for, cor I say correlation, not causality. Whether, where the causality comes from, that is a little bit harder to investigate. But we, we tried for correlation between a number of factors. The one factor where we found some significant correlation was if your strategy is two years, you have a higher chance of getting an investment. And like we discussed a little bit where this is coming from. Um, one thesis is um, you go into a budget meeting. Budget meetings are usually yearly, which means you go in, you say, well, we need all of this. Your manager comes back and says, well, this is the money you have. <laughs> go make the best use of it. If you have a one-year strategy, this is what happens. If you have a two-year strategy, you say, well, okay, I understand that for this year, we have to work with this money. But now we have a two-year strategy, so let's plan the budget already for year two. That and that means next year, when you come back, you already have earmarked all these other investments for the next round. 
So it's much harder to kind of then push back and say, well, we don't have the money. The point is you already agreed last year that you should do this, which changes the dynamic of the, of the discussion. So this is our, I, I would say this is, was our project team's uh, hypothesis uh, also in discussion with the managers who did use that technique. And I found it worthwhile to kind of share this with you. Um, another one is like, do you use application security management systems or maturity models? Actually, not many. Uh, a few of them without verification, some of them currently in use. Funny thing is, uh, currently, cons no, but we are considering it 42%. The weird thing is, we had the same ratio two years ago. So, hey guys, you know, are you considering this for two years or what? Yeah, um, so, if you want to go do this, then just do it. Yeah? Uh, you can't like, consider this forever. Uh, two years ago, I said, oh, this is a great beacon of hope. Now I'm a little bit like, hmm, okay, how long am, am I supposed to hope for this to happen? Um, another question is like, which, if you use models, which ones do you actually use? Uh, of course, I think the ISO 2701 is kind of a given. That's, that's pretty trivial. Um, but when you go like PCI DSS, that's also industry dominated. When you come to the like open SAM, BSIM type, I mean, we had OWASP, so open SAM is an interesting BSIM. Actually, it was amazingly low. It was crazy low. 1%, 2% are using a maturity model. One of the basic things of a maturity model is it helps you understand your benchmark and your gaps. It helps you build a roadmap. These are all things that fit into, that feed into your strategy. So how, without a roadmap, how, how, how do you write your strategy? Um, let me see. So this was another one about how does your organization assess the quality and effectiveness of application security? Actually, I'm going to skip that. Uh, another interesting question was, do you actually assess suppliers and external partners? How do you verify them? Um, mostly it's communication. Some of them do assessments, self-assessment by the other party, and some of them just do no reviews. We trust you. Uh, maybe the last part of this is about looking at incidents. Um, in the last 12 months, so we saw at the beginning, like we asked how many incidents did you have? Uh, this here compares with, in the last 12 months, have you experienced something here? And are you prepared? Have you experienced, exercised, or prepared for an incident? So about half half. And then the question is, so if you've done this, so how effective do you feel this preparation is? So if you're going to experience your next incident, how, how confident are you this is going reasonably OK? Uh, so they are confident, about one fifth, 30, one third is somewhat confident. So I would say like this, this one third is probably OK. The others are somewhat confident or less. So maybe you would want to do another exercise. Um, Part of incidents is sometimes also like what you have to do if something happens. A number of countries now ask you to share information. A number of countries discuss whether it's mandatory that you must share, must report, uh, you must do forensics, whatever. So we ask like, what are you doing actually now? So how, how is this in the world? Um, only about, a th so a third do conduct internal, informal root cause. You r about 40% run informal investigations, uh, run a formal investigation inside your organization. Actually, about 18% are required by law to report the security incident, which means 80% are not, and are also not doing. Um, what I found a little bit sad is that you, we don't share information with other companies, with your peers. It's basically not happening. So everybody says, oh, it would be great to share, but um, nobody is doing it. Um, good. Um, this is one thing that I found kind of funny. So this is a comparison between 2013 on the right and 2015 on the left. So one question was like, if you had an incident, do you normally after that, does your spending increase? In 2013, 
uh, like most people said, oh no, uh, we won't have increase after an incident. While now you have more than 60, nearly two and two and three say, oh yeah, if we had an incident, we're gonna increase, we, we're gonna have a budget increase. That's quite certain. And this was also my personal experience. No? What explains this a little bit is if you look at the next slide, which also has 2015, 2013, so this is the same. And here is actually 2013 with only asking the people who actually had a breach. So who, who really went through that painful process. So here you can see they actually have quite similar experience like them. So they do know, yeah, we had a breach, most likely our management will wake up and will increase the, ma uh, will increase the budget. So many of these here most likely didn't have a breach, which means like, mm, okay, um, they just thought it's all gonna be fine. Why do I say this? Um, it's a sign that it's quite likely if you did not have a breach, maybe you're underestimating how much money you need to invest. Good, and with this, I thank you and open for questions. Yep, yes, please. So, so the question was whether we also look at uh, answers for industries. I just re repeat your question so that uh, the recording will have that. Um, so we do have, I think this is the first time we are actually able to look at per industry. I have not broken it down yet. So um, there is data and I think it is sufficient to look at some industries. Uh, banking, government might be sufficient. IT might be sufficient. Mm, further breakdown, I don't think we have suffi sufficient data for statistics. Uh, same question about size uh, of companies. So there is some correlation, but um, I cannot say that, so I didn't find yet significant correlation. Um, I mean, some things are pretty obvious, but we have not finished all this uh, analysis at this point. Yeah. Other questions, comments? Okay, uh, then thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day here in Rome. Thank you.